The first step of all is to understand what time is. So T for think. The T of time, think. Deliberate. Time is so invisible. You know, the seconds just pass by. You don't look at your watch. You don't look at some clock. You don't even know how fast time passes. It's constantly passing. So the first thing is just a deliberation, a, we call it a meditative process, if you wish, that you can do every morning, and just focus on the fact time is moving. There's something that's constantly moving. The seconds tick away. Why is that so important? Because the things that we take for granted, or we ignore, or that are invisible, are the ones that we mostly scrounge. We, we um, often waste them, because we don't even realize what's happening. But if you were to see time as actual entities, that each moment in time is a form of power, and we'll talk about this more in the last, the E of time, but each moment is a particular life of its own, that changes things. Because then to think of how, do I, how am I going to maximize, how am I going to actualize these moments in time? And that's one of the first things that the Kabbalah teaches us, that time is actually made up of moments, of real life entities. The only thing is they're not physical. But if you saw time as like your children, you know, each child matters. Every second matters. And in that sense, that is the first thing is to recognize the value of time. You know, a person worries, one of the sages writes, a person worries about his loss of money, but he doesn't worry about his loss of time. Time is perhaps more valuable than anything else because the only thing that really comes and goes, and when you use the moment fully, that moment lives on forever. When you don't, it's like a moment that died. So that's the first step, think, to think about the value of time. And a good time to do that is in the morning when you start your day. Just a short meditation about the value of time. Next, the I of time is importance. Importance. To determine priorities. There was this guy who was giving a class in time management. He comes into the classroom. He was going to do a demonstration. He's going to do a demonstration. He brings a big empty aquarium. And with the helper, comes with several sacks. No one knows what's in the sacks. He puts the aquarium in the middle of the room. He says, okay, students, here. Opens up sack number one. Sack number one has some big boulders, rocks. And he puts the rocks into the aquarium. Okay. Is the aquarium full? Well, it was pretty clear that it wasn't full. I mean, it was now filled up, but it wasn't full. So the student said, no, it's not. Yes, indeed. He takes out bag number two, sack number two. And in it are stones, small stones. And he pours those stones into the bag, into the aquarium, I should say. And it fills up, of course, until the top. Is the, full, is the bag, is the aquarium full now? Well, some students said yes, some said no. They saw the sacks there. The third sack opens up gravel, fine gravel, fine sand. And he pours that into the aquarium. And that, of course, fills all the crevices wherever the small stones do not fill up until it gets to the top. Is it full? And again, most said yes, but there was still one more sack. But it could have been a trick. No, but it wasn't a trick. In that sack, he had pitchers of water, and he poured water into the aquarium. And now, class, is it filled? The water was already spilling over. So you had the water, you had the fine sand, the gravel, you had the small, rock, small stones, and you had the large boulders, the rocks. So at this point, yes, it's full. What do we learn from this? So the smart Alex in the class said, they knew it was a time management class, he said, we learned from this that even when your day is full, your time is full, you could always add something more. You know, even though the boulders were in there and then the rocks and then the gravel, you could still add something. You know, like you see today, they have these technologies, they have these planners who know how to take a closet and maximize its use. The same space. If you know how to, to properly coordinate and properly align things, you can maximize the space. So you can always fill more. He said, no, that's not the lesson. That is a lesson, but that's not the main lesson I wanted to teach you. The lesson is that if you don't get the rocks in first, you'll never get them in. Had you begun by filling the aquarium with water, and then with the gravel, and then with the small stones, 
And then with the, the, they never get the boulders in. There'd be no way to get them in. The boulders are your priorities. The things that are the constants, the values, the most important things in your life. Often our time gets used up by minutia, by details. You start looking how much time I'm focused on the details. You can never get to the priority or you get to it and it's quite late. So it's to establish, make a list of the things most important in your life. That's number two, importance. Number three, M. The M is for mission. You can also call it moment. Living in the moment. So let's go back to the point we made in number one. And I'll share it with a story. I heard it from my teacher, my mentor. It was in the days, he said, it was in the 1920s. His father-in-law, who was the head of the movement, was sitting in his office in Leningrad, Russia. And it was very dangerous times. And he was planning a very important uh, trip, secret trip to Moscow for a meeting that was about matters of life and death for the Jewish cause and for Jewish activities which he was involved in. And he comes in, the son-in-law, my teacher, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, known as the Rebbe, and he sees his father-in-law sitting very calmly, even though just in around 15 minutes he's supposed to go off to Moscow. He says, usually, you know, especially in general, I'm, you're traveling, but especially such an important journey and such a dangerous one, you'd think you're preparing and, and concerned and so on. His father is sitting there studying something or doing something oblivious, as if nothing else is going on. So he says, he tells the story. He told the story in 1970. He said, he asked his father, he understands the idea of self-mastery, self-control, but to that extent, the ability to be so calm in such a situation. And his father said, the father-in-law said to him, well, I learned from my father the secret of success in time. And he asked, what does that mean, success in time? Success in time means that you live in the moment. That even though you may be doing something in a few minutes from now, or you did something a few minutes ago, right now, this is the time before you. Nothing else is happening in the world. Complete focus. And he gave an example of the Rajbah. Rajbah was a middle-aged great sage and scholar who was multifaceted. He was a doctor. He was an advisor, he was a scholar, he was a writer, an author, and even had time to take a walk every day, even though his schedule was completely packed because he lived in the moment. He was not, even when you're doing something that's just a preparatory stage to something else, that's the moment. And when you live in that moment, that's what you need to be doing, tapping into that energy. The moment. And that brings me to the mission. It means that you have a mission in this world, a general mission. So whatever you're doing in time management, you want to make sure is aligned to the mission. But the mission comes down to details, comes down to each moment that you're given in this world has a mission in it. So while you're busy with this mission, even if you're, for example, prepare your bag, packing your bags to travel somewhere. So the packing the bags is a step definitely. You wouldn't be packing your bags unless you were traveling. But the packing the bags is right now the mission. It's part of your mission because it, it's necessary to take you to the next step. So right now you have to be completely focused, completely immersed in that moment. You'll see people who are successful, they have one thing on their desk, one thing that they're doing, even though they may have other things. As we spelled out in, in, step, in, point, in tip number two, the priorities, there are many priorities, and not everything you do is of equal import. But when you're doing it, be there entirely. And that requires, obviously, tremendous focus and concentration. Which now brings me to tip number four, the E. So the E is for energy. We'll also say for elevate. The mystics explain that time is energy, actual energy. Einstein came to that discovery as well, because usually you thought of energy as something that is either electricity, nuclear energy, the strong force, the weak force, elect electromagnetism, gravity. No, time itself is energy. It's not just an invisible um, uh, entity or an imaginary entity that we created just to measure moments. It itself is energy. When you think of it as energy, it's a whole different story. Energy means it has power. 
So that's why we have an expression, this comes from the Zohar, the classic work of Kabbalah, talking about Abraham. So it says, Abraham aged, and he came with his days. Which seems redundant. He, <coughs> excuse me. He aged and came with his days means, he came into his days, he, he, it means he aged. But the Zohar explains, no, it comes to add something. You can age simply because uh, the, the process, the biological process of aging, a person ages. But it doesn't mean you come with your full days. Abraham was a man that tapped into the energy of every moment. So as he aged, it wasn't just he got older. Every moment in his life was used to the fullest. So those moments began, began, became his allies. They became his foundations. Think of it this way. When you take a moment, and that moment is wasted, means it just passes, nothing happened in that moment. It's literally like I mentioned before, like a, like a child, like an opportunity lost. But if that moment is used to say a kind word to someone, to express love, to help an individual, something that's constructive, even though the moment passes, but what you did in the moment does not. That lives on. Everything great in this world, everything magical happened in a moment. May have happened a few moments, but it all happened in a moment. What happened was you tapped into the moment, saw the moment is now forever. To see eternity in an hour. To see the infinite in a grain of sand and eternity in an hour. In William Blake's words, to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wildflower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. So yes, in an hour, in a grain of sand, if it's used properly, you tap into it, literally it can be infinity, it can be internal. If someone saves a life, even if it happens in one split second, that is eternal. So time as energy, energy, the E, is a tremendous concept. So though we began by think, to focus on the fact that time exists and every time is valuable, this adds another dimension, the energy of it, which brings us to the elevate. The purpose and mission of our lives is to elevate every moment to elevate every corner, every space, every crevice in our lives. Elevate it, refine it, and fulfill it in the fullest possible way. By using it, by sanctifying it, by using it to help the world around you. That's our mission. So if a person takes and thinks and importance, prioritizes, and the M for mission, for moment, and the E for energy and for elevate, you will have a whole new way of looking at your life. Space has always been much more obvious. We've conquered space in many ways. We've tamed the elements. We've built civilizations and cities and homes that was once a wilderness. We're able to control the environment to some extent. Places that were once controlled by wild animals We've cleared out. I'm not saying it's always for the best, but that's what we did. We see today that it's not always impossible to control the entire environment. But space, in many ways, we have conquered. We've gone into outer space. In truth is, we have not conquered everything, and we should never see ourselves as conquerors. But in our minds, space is something. But time, what about time? Time we also can conquer. And I say conquer again, I mean, don't mean that in a dominant sense, I mean tapping into it. That time should not be our enemy. That time should be our friend. Time should be our ally. Think of it, we ride on time. If you tap into its energy and you're able to actualize every moment and living up to your mission and understand the priorities and all with that concentrated and concerted effort of recognizing the value in each moment, then time becomes our tremendous ally. Your days then are full. Not just they passed, you use them. But they have actually fed you, they have nurtured you. Every moment gave you energy, and you in turn elevated that moment. So these, see my friends, there's a way to look at time in a new way, something we usually see, we look at the calendar, what do I need to do today, what's my to-do list, what's my deadline, what's my schedule. That's one part of it. But another part is seeing time as an asset 
a partner with us in life. So when you think of it that way, time and space become the two, the two elements that go together with the human being that travels through time and space, and the three together create that power. In the words of the Sefer Yitzir, the Book of Formation, some say composed by Abraham, there's space, Elam, Shana, time, and nefesh, and soul, spirit. And these three are always interacting with each other. If one of them is compromised a bit, the other two are not fully powerful, empowered as well. So the goal is to see them as three elements that are part of our lives that help us propel us to places and unprecedented successes and heights. And may it be all in good health and with a full usage of all our time, long, healthy years. This has been Simon Jacobson, Meaningful Life Center. Meaningfullife.com is our website. Please check us out for a robust and wide array of different materials. Please subscribe to our growing YouTube channel and please share. And of course, love to hear your feedback, your questions, your comments, your suggestions. Be blessed, use your time well to the fullest and turn yes, an hour into infinity, a moment into the eternal. This program is brought to you by the Meaningful Life Center. Please help us continue our programs. Make even a small contribution at MeaningfulLife.com slash donate. in the dictionary Zionism is the belief that Jews should have a homeland that's what I, it says I, I think that's so, fair I think that's fair but Palestine wasn't empty Palestine had people in it and you can't just take over a land where people are, are living and say now it's we plant a flag and now it's ours you can't do that but the United Nations gave the land to Israel in 48 and, and the Balfour Declaration was wrong and I think and I disagree that um, it's fair in any way, shape or form. And also it's an ethno state. They're trying to, Israel is trying to create a state where there are only Jewish people. Where else in the world do you have that? Um, but there are two million Israeli Arabs that have the same rights as Israeli Jews living in Israel. They have the same rights. Yeah. Uh, two million is 20% of the population are Arab Muslim. Right, okay. Well, why are they, tra why are they trapping people in Gaza and the West Bank then? Um, because they feel like in Gaza it's a response to the Hamas October 7th attacks and they f I, I think they feel like they need to dismantle Hamas. Hamas was set up by Israel. Hamas was set up by Israel. Who helped to, to set up Hamas. When? Sorry. Finance Hamas? I thought it was the Iranians that were financing Hamas. No, oh, that's propaganda. Are you Jewish? No, it, I mean it doesn't matter. If no, I just wondered, but are you a Zionist? Uh, no, it doesn't matter. It does matter to me if you're a Zionist. Why does it matter? Because I want to know what your agenda is. Why, why do you need to know? I'm, I'm just here interviewing people. You don't need to know what... I do want to know what your agenda is. You don't need to know though. Well, I don't need to speak to you anymore then. Okay.